Excellency, honored friends. My name is uh, Gabriela Caranfille, and uh, it's an immense uh, honor and joy to me to address my first to your speech on the stage was very important uh, European institution, the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy, in Artistic Forum on Cultural Diplomacy. And I wish to personally thank to the director of this institution that uh, unfortunately is not present, but uh, the organizing committee has uh, the obligation to, to refer. Uh, my uh, thanks to, to the invitation and uh, for inviting Art Management Berlin uh, and uh, me as a chief art promoter of the contemporary art company, Art Management Berlin, at the direction of which I have been for uh, the last five years. I'm very honored to have this opportunity to introduce you to the Art Management Berlin activity and to have you at the presentation of the launch of the first Berliner Art Book 2019, the new contemporary art book promoting international art, featuring 39 acclaimed contemporary artists of all mediums who passed a very special and careful one year long selection. In the context of this forum, the first Berliner Art Book 2019 and the Art Management Berlin activity in Berlin and on the worldwide contemporary art scene has to bring its contribution to the promotion into the world of the highest moral valuable contemporary art as in today's massive number of artists and various contests and quality, there are also different topics and orientations. And we are aware that our selection work must indeed be a very careful, thank you, a very careful and rigorous one of quality before of everything else. Through our our management the Berlin activity, the first Berliner art book series, more than 200 contemporary artists have had the privilege to benefit from the vast exposure of uh, all uh, Art Management Berlin's advertising platforms, among uh, which our programs, also including the program of real exhibitions and uh, uh, our gallery, and uh, last, not at least, the exclusive promotion of the AMB advertising campaign with our exclusive partner, Sony Center am Potsdamer Platz in Berlin. For this, we wish to thank Sony Center um, Potsdamer Platz for such great involvement in the promotion of Art Management Berlin's contemporary artists, their representatives, and all collaborators and colleagues. Through the passion that I have for contemporary art and my dedication to the promotion of Art Management Berlin artists, with whom uh, we have been collaborating intensely for about last five years, we have made together a great route of visibility into the international galleries, motivating us even more to work on the worldwide promotion campaign, as it's definitely a very important attribute for the artist's success. Being also a professional theater actress and having been involved for decades in the theater and in professional performances on various stage, bringing to the public classic uh, theater authors and modern authors as well, my deep understanding, thank you so much, my, be, my deep understanding and knowledge of the various art circles and modern society spiritual needs of all possible forms and expression, and especially of a need of a higher um, human values that art must be recognized by, are the exact reasons that have brought me to follow the path of the promotion of the universal language that is contemporary art. Art Management Berlin started its activity with the basic purpose of promoting into the world professional contemporary artists of all mediums having essentially before everything else high spiritual evolution and strong moral principles as we deeply understand 
that the need today to globally promote very carefully selected art, so our goal, ethical as well as aesthetical, is to build and encourage a valuable way for the future of our society that's actually in a continuous degradation. To find the concrete, highest quality solutions to the problems of our days that are quite upside down concerning human morality, where true value are constantly undermined or most often ignored, and our present has become a very sad and empty space, lacking empathy more than ever, where the definition of uh, healthy morality is quite uh, misunderstood and where the number of mental psychological deviation also is increasing so quickly, causing the lack of harmonious state of minds in the individuals. We have considered a bold approach for more prosperous society. It is simple to notice the lack of mental health in the leaders of our society, as this is the most important detail to think with the environment uh, and with the healthy human morality is the basic human spiritual value and the basic platform on which society must be built on so for to resist uh, into the centuries to come. Regretfully, today society is full of hidden immorality and the terrific absence of a healthy spiritual life and harmony with fellow humans, nature, and with the, our creator, where shamelessness and the madness are treated as normalcy and all the level and true human connections and the capacity for real human relationships have become a mistake and where the human soul and honor are violated and treated with shame as disregard. This kind of society has no future. Today, being a humble person is equivalent to being a loser. Today, our decomposing society where human word and honor mean nothing is to be considered without any perspective or balanced future, and there are no reason for it to carry on existing on this way. Art Management Berlin, art activity, uh, in time has become the promotion through the contemporary art of value before of everything, that has the capacity and the purpose to build our society and to work along with our artists to find through art a different way than the one followed up till today. To promote the highest human values through contemporary art is one of our basic goals and achievement as the genuine beauty that we are promoting through our contemporary artists is a spiritual healing for the soul which our world need more than ever and especially today. To promote true value through contemporary art, this is the key role of art today where contemporary art cannot stand apart and not be actively involved in our society as today we are building history through the concrete choices that we make daily and we are able to follow and encourage certain contemporary art and in all different mediums and forms of expressions that has to absolutely serve a good purpose for our planet and nourish the spirit of many. The visual art and craftsmanship of artistic representations since ancient time been an extraordinary source of communication. They are non-verbal alliances modality which has the role of uniting nations and civilizations in the most efficient, efficient ways. From children to connoisseur, regardless of the individual skills and the level of knowledge in the artistic field, being the language of people a much more difficult way of communicating. Therefore, constructing the process of peace and cooperation through the nonverbal communication forms of art and music has become the primary focus of inner human contacts under the auspices of peace and prosperity desired by the nations. Through the visual arts, people
people have expressed themselves since fragile ages, when the language apparatus was not yet formed, thus being the most indispensable and direct way for two uh, individuals to express his thoughts, soul and also unconscious. The dexterity and the skills of individual to express his soul, to bring to the visual level his invisible resources through the skills and fantasy is the most miraculous way of expressing the potential of individual and the riches and values of human psyche, which every individual wears from birth and is given by a spiritual entity with unique spiritual potency. AMB is a company founded on the concept on the need of artists from all over the world who has high moral value and art performance and the authenticity of their art, which give rise to the immersed potency of their artistic personality. In this way, Art Management Berit has an important mission in the promotion of the artists around the world through the exclusive artistic series, the first Berliner art book that enjoys rich and wide visibility in the world. This is uh, an edition that has uh, a worldwide distribution, which in, uh, is the why we are eager to be known is in many cultural and artistic environment as possible as well in this forum. I have the great honor today to introduce you here at the Artistic uh, Forum on Cultural Diplomacy on Building Cultural Bridges through Art, Film and Music to the purpose uh, and motivation of AMB and its important value in a world where there is no similar company given the specificity and the defining purpose of activating and promoting art in the world as a way of raising awareness of today's society in its stagnation and constant deviation into nothingness. We have gladly accepted the um, invitation to bring our concrete contribution through the promotion of high value actors and artistic pursuits that are chosen with the extreme attention awareness what uh, they represent as personality and individuals. The bold mission of the company is to promote the authenticity of values and high artistic and moral artworks in contemporary art through the first Berliner art book. These are the reasons that Mart Management Berlin exists and to be clearly about the position that we have in our contemporary art circles in society, we shall introduce firstly the concept of aesthetic value, artistic value, and morality in contemporary art. In this entry, I focus only on a selection uh, of the various questions that have recently interested aestheticians and philosophers of art. More especially, I provide the theoretical tools and starting point to invite you to take up questions such as following. Can work of art be moral or immoral? It is always the case that a large immorality of a work of art constitutes an artistic or aesthetic defect. What general reasons can be given to limit the freedom of artistic expression? Particular emphasizes is placed on the debate when whether and how the moral value of a work of art influences its artistic value. After introducing the main families of theories on the relationship between the artistic, aesthetic, and moral values of work of art, I will discuss a few varieties of intellectualism and provide the arguments to evaluate the debate between ethicism and contextualism, two varieties of uh, intellectualism. A crucial aspect of the debate is the cognitivist claim. The main idea with uh, it is the art in at least certain cases can give a uh, cognitive value because it's conveys either propositional or the forms of knowledge. 
The issue of censorship is then discussed with the reference for to three general reasons given to limit artistic expression, two consequentialist and one deontological, as Art Management Berlin take it as reference those criteria in the selection of the artists for the future uh, and the first Berliner art book series. Interactionism and uh, autonomism are the view according to which the moral value of a work of art influences in the way to be specified is aesthetic or artistic values and vice versa, and is called interactionism. Interactionist views include ethicism and contextualism. According to ethicism, a moral flow in a work of art is always also an artistic or aesthetic defect. According to contextualism, the relationship between the moral value of a work of art and its artistic or aesthetic values is not systematic in the sense that the following can be true. There are artistic contexts, genre, categories of art, etc., in which moral defect in a work of art constitute an aesthetic uh, or artistic merit. On the other hand, Ethicists maintain that the connection between moral and artistic and or aesthetic values and systematic to a positive increase of the relevant uh, moral value of a works. There always corresponds a positive increase in, at least, its artistic or uh, aesthetic values and analog generalizations holds for decreases uh, in moral value. How these uh, interactions between different types of value take place is a matter of significant controversy. The other family of uh, theories discussed uh, here, autonomism, defends the idea that the moral or cognitive values of a work of art do not influence its aesthetic value of its artistic value. There can be mixed views, which we may call partial autonomism or partial interactionists. For example, there can be theories according to which there is a contextual correlation between the artistic and moral values of work of art, while the moral value and aesthetic value are independent from each other. The moral character of uh, artworks. There are many ways uh, of making sense of uh, attribution of moral properties uh, of a uh, work of art. For example, God drawing on the work Geist Cello suggests that moral judgment concerning works of art should be understood as judgment concerning that the authors perform or does through his works. The object of moral appraisal is what the number of agents, the number of various or relation to the number of author or people responsible for the production of a work has done through an object. In other words, the moral character of a work is given by an evolution of the artistic act performed through it, uh, where the artistic act is a type of action performed by rational agents, which can be collective in case there is more than one author. In this regard, the recognition of the intention of the authors of work of art can be important for determining the moral character of work. Gold claims that even when a work seems to be immoral because it contains certain immoral claims of representations, the moral character of the work should be judged on the base on the effect that the authors intend to achieve by using their artistic skills. Possible alternatives involve judging the direct or expected foreseeable, etc., consequences of the act in question, depending on the preferred normative ethical theory. For instance, the moral character of a work of art can be judged on the basis of the type of prescription or points of view implied or suggested rather than only on what is explicitly arguing for. In addition, a work of art can be assessed morally because of its purpose of proper function, as in the case of architectural works, or by virtue of the material of process used to make it. Following Robert Stecker and many others, I take it for granted here that there are different types of value, among them also composite ones. 
the artistic value of work can be defined as a composite or aggregation of its aesthetic, cognitive, and possible historical values. On this way, the artistic value of a work of art is thus influenced, but not entirely determined by its aesthetical value. Morality can influence the artistic value of work in different ways. For instance, its moral value can be part of its cognitive value and here influence its aesthetic value. If we also assume certain controversial uh, theories according to which what is morally good is also terrible aesthetically value or in a sense uh, perceptually pleasing. In the current debate, it is not always specified whether the moral value of a work of art contributes on its aesthetic or aesthetically value separately, or only to one or both simultaneously. Certain authors, such as uh, Barry's Goat, argue that the realm of aesthetic and that uh, of the artistic are one and the same. The reasons behind its identification are mainly variation on the idea that the tenable distinction between uh, the two types of value, artistic and aesthetic, has not yet been provided. However, I think that the useful distinction between artistic and aesthetic values can be drawn. One of the main reasons for this distinction is that in the contemporary art criticism, certain works are considered good art despite their lack of some of the properties that are traditionally taken by aesthetically positive, its beauty, harmony, balance, and so on. In addition, some contemporary works of art, certain installations, works of conceptual art, experimental video art project, etc., are considering as such and even successful not by virtue of their aesthetic properties. In many cases, the main uh, contribution of such works uh, to the art world is not their perceived aesthetic merit. The point is that although contemporary works of art have aesthetic properties, their possession of, for example, beauty is not taken by the authors of art critics to be what is relevant of their artistic evaluation. Additionally, the artistic value of a work is sometimes taken to have at least another component, namely its cognitive value, which does not seem to be easily classified as aesthetic. Art, cognitive value, and moral education. In the Western tradition, Plato offers a systematic discussion on the way in which the philosopher kings should censor the artistic who contribute with their poems, artworks, and stories to the education of youth of the city. This presupposes the idea that art can indeed educate or have some cognitive content. The great majority of philosophers, from Aristotle to, uh, to recent advocates of the value of the humanities, have maintained that the works of art, either essential or highly suitable for teaching general truth, in particular moral truth. The idea that moral cultivation is connected to art is also important, as for example, in Chinese tradition. For instance, Confucius associated the practice of certain types of music with the Shunzi, wrongly translated as an exemplary person. Jerome Stolnitz famously claimed, on the contrary, that the types of truths that can be obtained, even from the great uh, works of art, are general trivial uh, or uh, overblown uh, generalizations. However, not all philosophers employ the notion of a truth when they go on to specify that they take uh, to be valuable in the teaching of works of art. In particular, the cultivation approach, a cluster of ideas variously defended by uh, Wayne, both uh, Iris Marduk, Martha Nussbaum, Carroll, along with many other philosophers over the century, circumvents objection to the idea that art can provide moral education by claiming that even if art cannot provide propositional knowledge, there are different types of knowledge and skills in appreciating the art. 
Among these skills, we can list the capacity for fin final perceptual discrimination, imagination, emotions, and the overall ability to conduct moral reflection. Marta Nussbaum, for example, emphasized the capacity of certain novels, for instance, those of Henry James, to direct our attention to the particular lives of uh, distinct uh, fictional individuals and thereby stimulate our capacity to imaginatively take up the specific conditions of other people. Such a capacity sometimes called recreative imagination is assumed by uh, the central importance for mor morality. Nonetheless, some have noted that uh, an increasing sensitivity and imagination do not necessarily lead to morality or good behavior. For instance, an imaginative individual can grow better at hurting people. Ethicism. According to artistic ethicism, the moral value of a work of art when relevant to its artistic evaluation is systematically connected to its artistic value. The nature of this connection between the types of value at issue is systematic in the sense that every moral defect that is uh, relevant to the artistic evaluation of a work thereby decreases the artistic value of the work at issue. Similarly, a moral merit, when relevant, increases the artistic value of the work. Ethicists do not claim that having moral uh, value in itself makes a work a great work of art. It is not enough to contain or to have a positive moral character for a work to also be a masterpiece or a great example of its genre. Having a bad moral character is also not sufficient for being an artistic disaster. A work of art may be a good example of its type despite its morality. Aesthetic ethicism can be similarly explicated with the exception that instead of referring to the artistic value of work, the view simply claims that moral defect or merits decrease or increase the aesthetic value of a work. Why we should believe these theories? One argument in favor of artistic ethicism is the so-called merit response argument, the origin in which has been claimed by David Hume's essay on uh, the standard of the taste. Certain philosophers have argued that one of these is generally accepted by many interactionists, the cognitivists claim, creates a problem at the heart of artistic ethicism. Matthew Hiran's line of reasoning in support of the criticism can be summarized as follows. Some works of art prescribe us to assume an immoral point of view, for example, the point of view of Phaedophile, and they prescribe the, as a certain attitude toward immoral fiction or uh, non-fictional uh, real situations. The full appreciation of such works involves the adoption of the immoral point of view and on immoral attitude. Art can have cognitive value, and part of what it can teach also includes moral truth, skills, and etc. If part of the artistic value of a work of art is cognitive gain, we can obtain by engaging with the work in question, and uh, such cognitive gain requires a certain degree of immorality of the part of the work, then the work may have cognitive value by virtue of its moral character because by engaging with the work in question, the temporary adoption of an immoral point of view, an apparently immoral attitude uh, to certain events uh, or person broadens the moral skills. Ethicism seems to imply that the prescription of immoral attitude is always an artistic defect given that this one a way is uh, in which work can be immoral. However, this argument contradicts what has been previously suggested, namely that prescribing immoral attitudes can bring about cognitive gain and thus artistic merit. Art and censorship. 
Artistic acts understood uh, and the object of moral emphasizers can also be viewed as instances of an artist's freedom of the speech, provided a broad specification of speech. More specifically, this broader understanding should be wide enough to include the production work of art. Which artistic act should be limited or banned in their entirety? One condition on the scope of limitation to artistic act can be stated as follows. Free artistic expressions subject to restriction or those intended by their authors to be communicated and shared with others. For instance, a racist work produced in a, an artistic form but not intended for publication can uh, and, and secretly came by uh, its uh, author should be not punished in case of its accidental retrieval, provided the author took appropriate measures to conceal it. Unless a policy of uh, private uh, so crimes is implemented, limiting action to artistic expression should be directed at those artistic work of acts that are made or intended to be made publicly available. Obviously, different positions can also be adopted with respect to the domain and scope of limitations of artistic acts in relation to their public availability. For instance, someone may call the position to the effect that artists may have the right to produce certain works provided that they do not display them in specific public spaces or that such works are not made available for certain age groups. One of the main reasons offered uh, for uh, limiting artistic expression is when a work of art is immoral. The limitation proposed by Mill to free speech in what is known by harm principle, the main idea on which is that a civilized society can exercise its right to limit free speech only to prevent harm of others. Thus, in the case of works of art, a society would be justified in limiting certain artistic acts in cases in which such acts would uh, constitute harm to others. Different cases may command different specifications of what uh, it means by harmic orders and whether the certain degree of expected harm can somehow be justified in light of other possible goods that the artistic act may deliver. In this way, Art Management Berlin making a careful selection of art and of the artists with whom uh, we're choosing to promote and with whom we're choosing to uh, collaborate. For instance, many would agree that the work of art should be banned because of its toxicity and the installation may made uh, or, uh, of radioactive material and not display in the right condition may well be banned and uh, destroyed. Join uh, Feinberg maintains that there are cases in which we would be justified and limiting free speech when some acts continued and uh, offense to someone applied to the case of art, the idea is that offending uh, certain groups or individuals can be sufficient reason to limit freedom of artistic speech. I thought offending uh, someone seems to be less serious than directly harming someone. The offense uh, principle says that certain degree of limitation to free speech is justified in the case of the offense. Consequentialist considerations may not be able to solve ground for limiting certain artistic expressions. For example, Ray Langton has argued that certain restrictions to certain pornographic works are justified on the liberal premise of equal concern and respect for women to the extent that certain works portray women as uh, entities who do not have the same equal status as citizens. Restrictions can be applied. It must be added that the simple representation of women as not being equal citizens or more generally as independent and rational moral agent is not in itself immoral. What matters in the way in which the content is presented, if women are represented as being not equal citizens in the way that requires the approval of such stance toward women, then the work is que in question would somehow be immoral. 
Similarly, the idea can be applied to other social groups in the way in which they are portrayed, whether they are men, Muslims, or member of, for example, Church of Scientology. The possible risks of limiting artistic expression for the above reason are various. Among them, there is the risk of abuse, which is particularly significant because of the absolute commitment if in some beliefs held by people who belong to certain religious groups. Along the case of religion is by no means the only one relevant here. Some group seems to abuse the large right to not feel offended or discriminated against the equal citizens. Even in cases in which some of these artistically expressed criticisms may seem to be rational or at least worth considering. Given the absolute commitment that certain religious groups require or perceived deviations from some of their principles can be taken as, as offensive. If all criticism are excluded, even when expressed in an artistic way, the risk is that the feeling uh, an unreasonable impossibility of producing rational and accessible means of disagreement for their claims to be taken seriously, particularly sensitive groups may be required to show that the work they want to ban represent an unmotivated attack to other people's integrity, moral character, equal status as citizens, and so on. In addition, as a result to our previous discussion of contextualism, if it is true that certain immoral works of art can nonetheless have cognitive value, claims advanced by certain groups to censor works that display an immoral attitude toward them should be carefully considered and should not be easily accepted because even though these works may be taken to be offensive, they may nonetheless provide cognitive gain. Sometimes beauty can be worth a little offense. The immoral character of a work of art often affect, affects how we respond to them, but should if uh, affect our evolution of them as an art. The main arguments in favor of aesthetism, the claim that there is no internal relation between artistic value and moral character are considered. Nonetheless, the connection between arts and instructional aspirations and artistic value, as well as the ways in which works solicit responses from us, underwrite the claim that works moral character can be directly rele relevant to a works of value of art. Various competing accounts of how the relationship goes, ethic, moderate moralism, and immorality are considered. On the elaborate novel uh, consideration in favor of uh, suitable qualified cognitive immorality and uh, I suggest avenues of further inquiry with the respect of moral characters of art, of wa works of art. There can be many unintended aspects in evaluating a piece of art that conflict with or undermine what was uh, intended. Furthermore, an artist can be intended to create a work that precisely does not reflect actual attitudes they may have. One might also want to push the line that we should separate the character of an artwork off from authorial attitudes since we are judging the value of a work uh, as art. If the work is successful, then we don't require reference back to authorial attitude. If it isn't, then it's a, a failure. Either way, uh, what the character of the work is must be separable from outdoor attitudes. It's all very well to consider what's intended. Nonetheless, if I tell a racist joke, then no matter what my intention isn't racist, it still might have that public character independently of my own attitudes. Furthermore, it might be thought that there is a relevant disanalogy. The moral value of an action is partly discontinued by the propositional attitude underlying it was on the least one dominant view, the value of work of art, a strain a function of the value of the 
experience in airports affordable its uh, audience. So in the conclusion, I want to point the specific contribution of Art Management Berlin activity and of the exclusively selection of noteworthy contemporary artists of the first Berliner art book series, as we have in a deeply understanding and the vivid conscious of the artist's choice that we made in their promoting campaign. By our careful selection and our choices that we made in the selection of contemporary artists with whom we work, we have a deep understanding of building up an entire cultural education process and our directly involvement by adopting and by promoting AMB's completely new strategy in our choices, in the promotion of a valuable contemporary art. We open up the new windows to the imperative and absolutely very necessary new era of the contemporary art. Today, more acute than ever, it's an imperative question to start to think and to adopt and to work out a completely new and valuable strategy in the contemporary art, television and journalism, film industry, literature and the music by the selection as a valuable, the highly morality and conscious uh, and the creativity that comes out from those values has a certainly positive impact, influences and education of the human spirit. Every second choices that we made, it's a concrete investment that we made for entire our tomorrow. The contemporary art, film industry, and the music as mass media resources of information has today an imperative role for be able to involve themselves as a bold source and a giant potency that it's uh, the fact in the correct education of the cognitive, ethical, aesthetical, and moral values in the upcoming generations. And to start to have a distinguishing, bold role as an essential attribute to the education of a cup, cup, in Shulg, uh, upcoming generations. Sorry. It's uh, also very necessary the contemporary art uh, and all another field of art and creativity will take a greatly and bold attitude about the highest emergency of our present for be able to nourish healthy spiritual uh, upcoming generations. If there is no accurate choices of every step that we made to follow, there it, it will be a blast of our uncertain and tragic future of our uh, planet. I thank you again, um, Institute for Cultural Diplomacy, the organizing committee for giving us the opportunity to present our uh, plan and our future uh, uh, generations uh, ideas, new ideas. And uh, we took uh, this book that uh, we hope that will become uh, a book ambassador of highest human spirituality of the contemporary art, as this is the, our reason that why we are working and those are the reasons why we're existing as an uh, art management company. I'm very honored yet to uh, invite uh, on the stage to receive the copies uh, of the first Berliner art book uh, 2019, the contemporary artist guest uh, that we have uh, this evening from England, Graham Leffling where he has been future successful and congratulate you, please, Graham, uh, take a place here. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, we want uh, also absolutely to mention uh, your family, uh, your wife that is here, that has been encouraged you during the years to follow uh, this path of the art. And uh, we uh, also, we uh, very gladly uh, present you here at this. Thank uh, you, yeah. And, uh, well, thank you, <laughs> to, to all your uh, art that you made. Uh, and uh, to encourage you to, to follow this path in the art. And uh, after today, I think I'll yeah. uh, disappear. <laughs> no, this is not, uh, everybody has uh, the books. Uh, 
and uh, can uh, admire very, uh, very unique uh, pieces of art uh, that make uh, Graham laughing. And uh, we uh, hope that uh, this will inspire you so far to, to, to follow this uh, path of art and to give uh, us uh, the better through your art uh, our tomorrows. And uh, also, you can, uh, if, if you feel something to say, uh, you are very welcome. Why do you think uh, it's important? For example, the art that you, you're doing, the, what yeah. gives to you the art? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, Bella, uh, if you can accommodate, accommodate yourself. Uh, I don't wear these. <laughs> it's an artist. <laughs> A true artist, you never. <laughs> yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, it's a good job I don't panic. I just, uh, I'm just going to talk to you at the moment, um, thanks to my friend here, ex-friend here, um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of sayings in England, and one comes to mind at the moment. Um, we call it the first law of holes. It basically states that if you're in one, stop digging. That's where I am at the moment. You might not be <laughs> That's the, that's the position I'm in at the moment. I, uh, I hope I can speak reason to you, but I won't be speaking as um, you have, my dear. Uh, basically, uh, I'd like to obviously thar thank everybody, Gabriella and her team at Art Management Berlin, particularly as I'm hoping for a lift back to the hotel. I mean... <laughs> This is a beautiful experience. Yeah. <laughs> Tomorrow you will appreciate in different ways, I'm so sure. Yeah, about. <laughs> if I look into the light, I can't see anybody. Um, <laughs> no, actually, Gabriella was the first person. Uh, Even if you are close to the podium, you still have the light on the dinner. Then no, I'm very happy with the light in my face. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's kind of godlike in a way. <laughs> Um, no, actually, Gabriella was the first person to notice any of the pieces that uh, appeared on Facebook, thanks to a friend uh, who uh, thought that uh, some people would like to see them, so they appeared, and uh, I thought that was it. This was a year ago now, exactly a year ago, funny enough, and Gabrielle. Uh, contacted me and said, you know, we'd like to put some of your uh, photographs in her, in her um, first bill in a art manual and um, I'm not, nobody ever's going to meet me, so um, fine, do it. But uh, yes, it's uh, what I've found because I never set out to sell anything, in fact I haven't, and I've never, I've never exhibited. Um, I've been invited to, if you can call it that, to exhibit in America and China. It, it might sound very alien to you, you'd think I'd be jumping out of my skin, but when you reach my age and uh, with the background, it wasn't really relevant, plus um, if you come from East Anglia, you know Britain's a bit strange probably anyway. You've been hearing that we're kind of jumping out of one or two of the, the big clubs in Europe. Probably you've heard of it. But uh, the East Angles in this area, we're, you know, quite independent. And, you know, I mean, you think, cool, going all that way to China, it's an awful long way, or America, you know. Drop off the edge, you know, flat. But I hadn't done anything, and uh, I, um, Gabriella invited me along, and I thought, yes, and I thought, yeah, I'll be meeting a whole load of other people here, which I am. 
But uh, uh, not quite as I imagined it, but she had that as a pleasant surprise. Um, I, I'll just really start. I only started when I was 65 uh, doing anything. I've had a lifelong passion for nature and the sea. Uh, if you live in East Anglia, it's basically farmland, uh, forestry, four rivers, and a coastline that varies from almost from metre to metre, with the North Sea constantly attacking it, taking from some areas, areas houses, the lot. Within a week it can deposit 100,000 tonnes of shingle somewhere else, totally transforming it. It's that dynamic. And uh, I've always been very, very interested and drawn to it. And uh, I don't know what it was. I was going to art school. I'd been accepted when I was 18. So that is uh, over 50 years ago. But for one reason and another, never went. And it always played on my mind. And it meant that I never could ever bring myself to paint or draw, ever. I thought I destroyed everything when I couldn't go. Partially a reaction, I think, to family. But I destroyed it all. They liked it, but they didn't want me to go to art school, if you see what I mean. And uh, I never went back to it for 50 years. Let it all vouch for that. There's nothing. And then I was 65 and going down to the beach again. Uh, as I do probably by the week. And it, why should it just happen on this weekend? Okay, there'd been a very powerful storm. And when that happens, the uh, sea <coughs> and the wind together can really drag stuff off, off the bottom and you get all of this wrecked material from even hundreds of years before uh, being deposited, steel, anything you can think of, even aluminium from aircraft from the Se Second World War because they went down into the sea and uh, I always treat them with a great reverence because they could be German pilots, British pilots, American pilots, anything. And I keep them for special occasions and I, I use them. Uh, it just occurred to me, uh, we call it, I don't know what you call it uh, in German, but we call it either where the high tide comes up to. It leaves what we call a strand line, the flotsam line, where everything is cast and as it, the sea recedes, everything is left there. So if you go along there, masses of stuff, vegetable, dead fish, all kinds of things. And suddenly I just happened, I don't know why, after so many times of visiting, I could see all these shapes and colours and textures of wood, bits of metal, uh, anything you can think of. Uh, the wood in particular interested me, because if you can imagine, it's not just the... It's not just the action of the currents underneath, drawing the stones and rattling them past, say, pieces of wood that's sticking up in, in, in the bottom, that tear at it and create shapes. But it's also all of the living animals down there, the marine worms, the um, various forms of uh, uh, crustacea that actually bore into timbers. And they hollow it out till it's almost no, no weight to it at all. And yet some pieces of oak, say from a, a wreck, say that's 200 years old, it'll be as hard as iron. You can't, you've got to work with it as it is. You can't, uh, you can't change it. You can, but it comes with a price. That's why the hands are a bit distorted. I thought, I don't know. All of those are so unlike any of the normal things that you see in museums, you know, painting obviously, but uh, bronzes, not bronzes, 
It's not like uh, sculpting with uh, marble or something like that. They've got completely different textures. It might be difficult if you haven't seen some of them, but actually if you ever, if you do want to see some of them, Belinda actually took some photographs, which she can't show, but can show you later, which will show you what I mean. They, they, it came to me that the ideas that I of weird ideas that I had in my head, I could actually put these things together and it would almost be that when they were completed, the form would look like it had almost grown organically. It hadn't been touched by, I'm not saying an artist because I don't really look up, I just do what I do. But it had not been touched by man. You won't, I would hope that you wouldn't see any marks that would say, oh, he did that. <coughs> Because it all goes on internally, but every single piece is kind of made to go together. And in my eyes, looks looks to have a, an energy and a movement that so much of the, the modern art that I see just doesn't seem to possess. It's the, it's the, it's the life thing for me. Anyway. Uh, that's what I, I started doing at, um, at the age of 65. I was helped in that, uh, this is why I don't normally dress like this, I'd spent 20 years uh, before I retired restoring antiques. So I taught myself to work with natural materials, obviously wood, but ceramics, where you've got to kind of a little tiny piece has gone and you've got to bring it back and then perfectly blend it in and then colour it but get the colour so that you could just try and fire that area in it. You know, no end of kind of things like that. And I thought, well, I can do the same uh, actually using these materials. So I'm completely untrained in, if you like, a classical sense in that I've had no... Uh, art training at art school. But in a way, I think it's been a help in what actually I do because it hasn't had any real influence. I haven't had outside influences. The people that really, I mean, I don't get me wrong, I admire so much of, uh, we always go to galleries, so much of European and Eastern art. But direct influences, uh, not too many. I mean, in Britain, it would be Turner, the watercolour artist, who I think is just mind-blowing, what he did with watercolours. Because I can think back to when I was trying watercolours when I was in my teens. It was <coughs> such a difficult medium. But he makes it explode. Uh, but also, uh, Francis Bacon. You know, he was untrained. <coughs> uh, he didn't go to art school. And uh, okay, a lot of people won't like his stuff, but let's face it, it's pretty extreme. But uh, it just has this uh, absolute, you feel as if you've been hit by a sledgehammer. You know, you get looking at something like the uh, screaming Pope or something like that. It's been shot through the eye. I mean, it's a weird vision anyway, but when you see that mouth and But that came from, you know, somebody that, uh, well, his life was just chaotic as well. But he hadn't got any, he hadn't had any training. He just, just went ahead and did it. This is exactly what experience in, in, in I'm sorry that I interrupt you. It's exactly what experience the uh, artist in the directly spiritual uh, connection with the divinity. And that's why the, inspiration that you get from the nature uh, is most powerful uh, in the world. So uh, yeah. no, this I'm... is the, the main reason yeah. that's why we we've uh, choose you, uh, Graham, uh, and uh, your art uh, really speak uh, in many ways. Uh, and yeah. that's why we, uh, we congratulate you heartily for uh, your uh, extraordinary art. Uh, everybody you can, uh, you can see also in, uh, in the art books. Yeah. 
the, the art of grammar. Well, as I say, uh, I'll be back to my day job when I go back <laughs> home, which will be the Labradors taking them for walks on the meadows, and I'll get back to it. The last year I haven't done anything because I suddenly thought I would... I wanted to do something with film. And we have this most extraordinary happening. It's happening now, actually, the next week or two. I want to get up at uh, Minsmere uh, in the evening when it's really cold. You'll all know of the, the starling, the bird, probably, the starling. But anyway, when they're migrating, you'll have crowds, 50,000, 70,000 birds. And what they do, they form these groups that move in an extraordinary way. They're millimetres apart. They never touch each other. And when you're looking, they go from a really dense colour and suddenly they'll mushroom and they'll change shape. And it's, it's just one of the wonders of the world and very few people see it. And to make it even better where we are, if you know your birds, the peregrine falcon, fastest moving bird of all. In, in its uh, attack flight down, it'll reach 300 kilometers an hour. And these birds are coming in to these big starling groups. And the starlings are forming these wonderful shapes as the, you, you, you don't even catch it when you're filming, but you only see it later on when you slow down. As these uh, talk, these peregrine falcons are going through them, and occasionally you'll just see them, and they've got a starling in one hand. How they do it, I don't know, because the starlings do that, so it mesmerises the bird. It can't concentrate on one. And I've taken this film, and I've been trying to edit it. Linda's been trying, to, and I've been trying to set it to music. And this is one area that I find that. Uh, if I'd have had some experience and of, you know, art procedure, I'd be getting somewhere at the moment. Uh, well, it's not going terribly well, really, is it? But uh, anyway, I mean, that's just what I do. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not here to say anything more. Uh, Thank you, uh, Graham, for your marvelous stories into creation, your extraordinary extraordinary art and uh, we hope uh, that uh, our uh, uh, visit uh, my life has been short <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. we, we are very glad to have you here today yeah, and uh, we, we hope to collaborate with you furthermore and to promote you and your art uh, on the contemporary art worldwide stage thank well, you so very much for being here